and I really appreciate for all of for, for all your time. So we have the privilege. I have the privilege to introduce one of the world renowned, very famous movement disorder and neurologist, Professor Ray Chowdhury. The Professor Ray Chowdhury is one of the leading neurologists from King's College Hospital and in London. He's the director of Parkinson's unit at King's College Hospital. So he's been invited today by Nimans Hospital to give his lecture and his new treatments in Parkinson's disease. So it's a privilege to have Professor Ray Chowdhury with us in Bangalore. So second, we have the privilege to introduce Dr. Natalia Titova. She's a neurologist and she's a movement disorder specialist from Moscow. She is in Parkinson's disease. She does a lot of charity work for the patients of Parkinson's in both in Moscow and collaborating with us here in London. So it's a privilege to have Natalia here. And I have to say, Natalia authored over 100 papers and Professor Ray Chowdhury himself is a master and pioneered 500 papers. And I want to highlight, there is a new book coming up. So if you can focus on that one here, there is a new book. It's a big textbook for all, for every patient, carer, patients, wives, patients, husbands, for every carer, postgraduate doctors, and for all the neurologists in Bangalore, neurologists in Hyderabad, for entire India. This book will be useful for everyone who understand, who easily to understand Parkinson's disease. If you read this book, you understand what is Parkinson's. So this book is going to come to India in June. We're going to do a big launch here in Bangalore because the reason why I brought this eminent neurologist to Bangalore is I, myself, I studied, I did my medical school from here, from Bangalore, so my heart beats for Bangalore. That's the reason why, whatever I want to do, I want to do this first. Um, in India, in India, the patients with Parkinson's disease has been for a long time been misdiagnosed, undertreated. So by the time patients with Parkinson's disease comes to the specialist, say for example, to Nimans, to see a neurologist. They are already in stage 3. So we need to identify from the stage 1. Professor Chaudhry is going to tell us how to identify from the stage 1 in Parkinson's disease. So and also here in India, the, we only use oral treatments for Parkinson's. Only if you go to GP, they give a big prescription for 10, 10 drugs. It's not. It's old fashioned. We have new treatments. Uh, here I'm going to show you the three treatments is a patch treatment and a pump treatment. So now Professor Chowdhury will, will talk about our English doctor called James Parkinson. It's 200 years. Uh, he described it in 1817 and it's 2017 now. It's 200 years since he first described the condition. And it's worth remembering that in India, Parkinson is going to be really important now because it's the second commonest neurodegenerative disorder in the world. After dementia comes Parkinson's. And as we live longer, a lot of people are living longer now because of more economic growth and lifestyle changes in India, for instance. One in 50 over the age of 80 will develop Parkinson's. One in 50. As a result, we're going to see a large number of people with Parkinson's in India. And as Dr. Mehta said, it's very important that we recognize the condition, its implications and its impact on our aging, growing population. But it's also worth remembering that 10% of all people who develop Parkinson's are under the age of 40. So Parkinson's affects very young people, very old people, and is commoner in the very older people. And as regards the book, you'll hear that from Dr. Tukova. It addresses these main issues that James Parkinson wrote about 200 years back. And, and we're very excited about it. Of course, we're very excited to be here and also with the, with the event that, you, that Dr. Mehta is launching. Parkinson's disease, it's not only a disease. Uh, now we have a new concept of Parkinson's disease that it is a complex disease that can present 
in a different different ways with uh, numerous uh, symptoms. And uh, this disease uh, has a hidden face. And this hidden face is a non-motor symptom. Uh, unfortunately, these uh, non-motor symptoms uh, are usually not discussed. Uh, there are a lot of problems. And there are, uh, there are a lot of um, uh, conditions and a lot of um, uh, situations why they are not discussed. Uh, first of all, they are not discussed uh, due to lack of time. When doctors uh, work in very stressful condition and they don't have time to discuss them. Uh, it's a big problem number one. The problem number two is that uh, patients uh, have very low awareness about these symptoms. They don't know that non-motor symptoms are related to Parkinson's disease. And the uh, problem number three, uh, the doctors have uh, also very low awareness about uh, these non-motor symptoms. Uh, now we have very useful tool uh, that can help us to reveal these non-motor symptoms. And this uh, tool was uh, validated, um, and uh, this tool is a Parkinson disease specific. And uh, Ray Chaudhary is uh, the person who developed this tool that's called uh, Non-Motor Symptoms Questionnaire. It is uh, very uh, easy to use, but um, it can allow patients uh, to discuss non-motor symptoms uh, with the doctor. So we propose uh, to apply this non motor symptoms questionnaire in every patient uh, with Parkinson's disease. Typically, the severity of uh, Parkinson's disease uh, is um, assessed by uh, helmet guard staging. Uh, every doctor who deals with patients with Parkinson's disease is familiar with it. It is a very useful tool, but uh, based on only on motor science, with no non motor component. But now we know that non motor symptoms. Uh, complicate the condition from very early stage, even from non-motor stage, uh, pre-motor stage to the last stage. Uh, that's why it's very important to reveal the symptoms uh, in every patient. And uh, we think that uh, it is very important to apply this tool, the motor symptom questionnaire, in every patient uh, at least uh, once uh, every 6 to 12 months. And, um, very important question um, about quality of life. Quality of life of patients with Parkinson's disease uh, is based not only on motor symptoms. Of course, non motor symptoms uh, is a very important part of uh, the uh, influence on uh, quality of life. But a lot of studies, including, including very big work uh, that was done by Professor Richard Gray and uh, Alvaro. Another collaborator from Spain, uh, Pablo Martinez Martin, in over 400 patients, uh, they have shown in this work that, uh, no, uh, that quality of life uh, has a very important driver as uh, uh, non motor symptoms. And these uh, non motor symptoms uh, have the uh, highest correlation with quality of life in excess, on, uh, in, in excess of uh, motor symptoms and motor complications of um, the dominergic treatment. And it's a pleasure for me again to say that uh, we are going to, uh, well, we, are going, we are going to collaborate this, yes, uh, but we are going to launch a book um, with the name um, No Motor Symptoms, uh, no motor symptoms of Parkinson's Disease, uh, The Hippo Face. And you can see the cover here. 300 to 500 patients per 100,000 per 100,000 population, especially Parsi community, is one which has highest can affect you know in a very severe way. So it depends on prevalence rate, dif difference to different you know uh, race. But Canadians has one percentage. Andhra, Telugu has different percentage. Now, what Parsi is the reason for that? See, it's a gen genetics. There's a genetic structure. And in certain communities, we see increased susceptibility to Parkinson's. And the, it has been described, particularly in the Parsi community in Mumbai, that uh, there was higher rates of Parkinson's. And I think, as Dr. Mehta says, we're most likely because of some genetic um, uh, genetic transmission in a, in a smallish community. Uh, and similar pockets have been described in other groups from the world.
but it's of interest that there is that one thing in there. So, uh, at this moment in time, and I think from the environmental side, what we know, certain types of metal, for instance, exposure to manganese, can cause a Parkinsonian problem. I think Dr. Tatova knows about cases where people have used certain drugs for recreational purposes, they can turn into Parkinsonian condition, and that might be related to manganese uh, toxicity. And there is also perhaps a suggestion that exposure to carbon monoxide gas in the environment can also uh, lead to a Parkinsonian condition, uh, but not alcohol. Uh, food which blocks a chemical called dopamine. Parkinson is caused by lack of a chemical called dopamine in the brain. So if you eat something which blocks dopamine, then it can cause Parkinsonism. But that's not seen in India. It's been described in northern, northern Karnataka. They, they use a lot of uh, raw food, like a uh, mix of everything. And also junk foods, like a Chinese restaurant. They use a bit of a manganese for the taste. So that sort of manganese is the one we need to avoid. How's the population? Yeah. Mixture of raw water symptoms and non water symptoms. Uh, as I said, uh, we several years ago we considered this disease only as a water disease, and there was a category of uh, movement disorder. Yes. Uh, but now we know that it's not true. You know, uh, now we know that uh, sometimes Parkinson's disease it is mostly non water disease. And uh, one chapter in our book uh, will have a name, uh, Parkinson disease is a complex non-motor disease. Because sometimes we, see, we can see uh, the divergence between uh, motor staging and non-motor staging. Sometimes we have, and not sometimes, very often we have patients who have a very early motor disease, but uh, advanced uh, non-motor disease. Uh, for instance, uh, first, uh, the stage by cardiac and uh, severe and very severe non motor syndrome. And uh, these patients, of course, they uh, have very low quality of life compared to patients who have only more. The tremor, people have tremor, they have difficulty walking, they have stiffness, they have difficulty turning, and they have difficulty writing for writing becomes more. But as Dr. Titova says, the real problem in these people is loss of sense of smell. They can't sleep properly at night, there's depression, there's pain, there's anxiety, there is problems with gut, bowel, difficulty in swallowing, dribbling of saliva, and these we call non water And that's the hidden face. And the book that we are attempting to write is really about that, the exposing this hidden face, because many doctors, many specialists are not properly aware of these problems in Parkinson's. And this book, with Dr. Tito and myself editing, we have a worldwide focus. We have over 50 chapters written by leaders from all over the world, including people from India. And we'll really focus on this non-merger problems that we're talking about. That's the first stage you need to be aware. So love, they lose smell. So that's the first one. The latest treatments developed at King's College Hospital are with Dr. Professor Chowdhury, patch treatment, pan treatment, and pipe treatment. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Two volumes. Yeah. Fifty-three so, chapters. Fifty-three chapters. That's the main. We edit. Yeah. Show this set of things. Yeah. Good. Doctor described Parkinson's disease. Two hundred years this year. But actually, if we go back to history, Parkinson's have been described from India many, many years back. It's in the in the scriptures. Shushruta, the famous physician in the old days, described Parkinson's. It was known as Kampavata those days. But the modern description comes from James Parkinson's 200 years. And what we now know, normally people think about Parkinson as a motor disorder, which means tremor, a shaking, stiffness, difficulty in writing, difficulty in walking, difficulty in turning in bed at night. But we also know that there's a non-motor problem of Parkinson's, that problems such as depression, pain, anxiety, problems with sleep, problems with mood, huge problem in Parkinson's. So our understanding 200 years since is now a motor problem and a non-motor problem. For Parkinson's, patch treatment, 
pen treatment, pipe treatment. I'll show you how it looks like. England, five years using it. England only. Here, India may very expensive. So that's, what, that, that's why they're not coming here. People from India coming to London, rich British, for, ten, for five years takes ten, ten different tablets. No tablets. So, so patch treatment. One patch, like patch, like a pain patch. One patch for the body for 24 hours. So next one is pen. Insulin, insulin, insulin injection. Insulin treatment. Same thing, insulin pen injection. Next one is pipe treatment. So the three treatments are available. So what I want to tell the, to the patients of India and Bangalore, please don't lose hope. That is an excellent treatment.